Just trying to. Would you like a, would you like a pen? I just like you to write it down because I can. That's all right. You've got, you've got a pen here. Go ahead. You can write it down if you want. No, I I, mean, I, I know what you it is. A, you wanted the pen. You're the one that keeps forgetting it. I want you to write it down. You, so you from what remember. I remember, you said that how does Allah know that Allah knows that what Allah knows is correct? Yeah. Okay. So based on His knowledge. Okay. Yes. The no. <laughs> okay. Is the knowledge. So you can't say Allah knows his knowledge is right based on his knowledge. Because that's circular. Is, is, yeah, what so, do you mean? Sorry, sorry. What do you mean Allah knows his knowledge is right? It's, it's truthful. It's correct. Truthful? Yeah. Truthful? What do you mean? Uh, well, okay, right. That's now you've, you've introduced a new term, right? No. I'm just saying, no, how does Allah yeah, yeah, know no, that what Allah knows no, is you, right? I, you, we're not, fine, fine. We're not, we're not mincing terms. It's a no, really no, you, say, you just said a new term, which is truthful, right? It's not. It's not. If you're just saying that it's right. Okay, or, because. Or, or okay. Right. Good, good. Correct. Now I understand your question. Okay. How do you know Allah? what Allah knows is truthful? Not me. How does Allah yes, know? Yes, how does Allah know that what Allah knows is truthful? Yeah. One of Allah's attributes is. One of Allah's attributes is that He is Al Haq, which means He is the truthful. I know what Haq means. But you can't yeah. say an attribute explains yeah. how a thing happens. Yes, it can. Right? Yes, I can say no, that. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. I can say the universe comes from nothing. But that's why I told and you. You'll go, how can the universe come from nothing? Go, well, that's what but it means to Robert, be a universe. It Robert? It's to come from nothing. Was it, was it Robert you said, yeah? You see, so, so it saying it's an attribute. I, I said to you, there's two, kind, there's two kinds of attributes, right? There's the interest. I understand. Look, if I yeah. asked you how a car worked, right? And how it moves forward, you're like, oh, that's an attribute of a car. I'd be like, Muhammad. Aki, you've told me nothing. Sorry? Uh, did you understand what I just said? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, but what's, so what's, you what's, would what's, have told me nothing about how so a car how, moves forward. Right? Okay, If right. you're like, ah, oh, well, that's one of the attributes of a car, uh -huh. I'd be like... So how does Allah's I, knowledge operate? Yeah, we don't know how it operates. But we know how it doesn't operate. We, we don't know. Okay, yeah, we don't. Yeah, yeah. So what we you're asking? How does it? Op, how does Allah's knowledge operate? No, no, don't ask me. Ask because I've like I've said it five times. So you, your question, this, your like initial really inquiry, your question. initial inquiry. How does Allah know what Allah? Uh, is, how does Allah know that His knowledge is true? Yeah, or is the truth? And I said that one of His other attributes is that He is the truth. It's haq. Circular. It's not circular because this is not. It's, he is al haq. Everything that. So let me ask you a question. Uh, let me let me let me put it in 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 in, in, a, in a human language for you, right? Do you know what a circular How does, argument is? It's not circular. That's the let, worst let me, of circular. Let me explain. Argument. I'm sorry. Say for example, if you have uh, a sun, you know the sun, yeah, or a light. Let's say a, a candle. And you say, how does a candle emit light? I say because its essence is light. Yes. So I I'm saying to you that what Allah emanates is truth because he is the truth that's one of his intrinsic attributes you what a bad explanation that is of why a candle emits light the candle emits light because of the emission of photons yeah fine but that's, that's part, part of it's part of his intrinsic attributes right Atoms, no, you're going into a naturalistic which, uh, end of Agreed. A naturalistic world. That's an explanation. Good, it's like, a good explanation. I could, I, you could actually answer every question ever posed to you, literally every single question. But would you agree going, with me? Ah, that's part of its essence. And I'd be like, yeah. Jim, Muhammad, so, thank you. For example, if you, have, so if, you have, if you have a son. So you've told me nothing. You but you're saying, how does it like, operate? Like, like, we don't know how it operates. Okay, yeah. but that's the answer. Yeah, that's right? the answer. So, yeah. so, so, so the point is, you have no idea how Allah knows. Well, we don't know no, how Allah knows yeah. it's true. How? No, 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 hold well, on. Why do you no, no, no. That, that's that a different is. question. No, that you said you have no idea how it no, operates. No, no, no. I said the operation of the. Let me explain. For example, we know that Allah has certain attributes. Yeah. Well, you don't know this, right? Because you don't even know how it works. So. Let me. Well, let me explain. Some of the attributes of God are that He's knowledgeable, that He's the truth. Yeah. So by extension, just like a light, so just like the sun is made up of hydrogen and it emits hydrogen, it emits through its rays, yeah, rays, the sun and the rays, the sun causes... It emits the, radiation, yeah. not hydrogen. And okay, it, fine, fine. It's but okay. It's no problems. It yeah? emits light. Yeah, it emits light. Yeah. So how does it emit the light? Because it possesses it in the first place. Yes? No, that's not what I meant to say. But never mind. Yeah, no problem. But that's the, the same Let's idea. Let's just say that you're saying it's an essential property of it. Yes. Yes, but that's the circular argument. But you, you're answer, asking the question was, how does he, how does he, how does it operate? No. I mean, 
Yes, the sorry, question is very simple: is how does Allah know that Allah's knowledge is yeah, yeah, correct? That, right. And so you're saying we don't know. No, no, we're saying that. No, you just said yeah, we yeah, don't know. We don't know how okay, uh, the so operation of the Allah's knowledge is. if you yeah. don't know? Yeah. Why on earth do you? Yeah, that's the, that's the fallacy of incredulity. That's the fallacy of ignorance. Why are you trust it? That's the fallacy. Like, it's like you can say that you know yeah. you can make the same argument for a supernaturally you know, uh, no, but, omniscient yeah. pizza. But you just a, say that's an attribute of the pizza. I understand. You can say the Bible is true because no, the Bible is true. No, that's a false analogy. No, 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 it's exactly the it's, uh, that same analogy. You're you saying say that it's analogy? one of its attributes. Wait, hold on. I, I, but, I'm saying, Muhammad, how does this no, work? No, no, hold on, hold on. Like, so, oh, you, said, you, you just said, this is what you said, right? You said you got an omnipotent pizza. I said you, no, I didn't. I said you could make exactly the same argument. No, you can't. For anything. No, you can't. By saying it's one of its properties. If you say the pizza is omnipotent, that's a contradiction. That's one of its properties. Now, hold on. If you say the pizza is omnipotent, that's the. I said omniscient. Omniscient, actually. fine. I said that's one of its properties. Whether it's omnipotent or omniscient, if you attach any omni properties to a pizza, that's demonstrably falsifiable. You don't know that. It's one of its attributes. No, 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 no. I can actually. Look. I can actually disprove that. You can't actually. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. You can't. If you say that the pizza has. You don't actually deal in disproofs. But the point is this. Let's no, get no, back, no, 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 no. Let's get back no, to no, the no, topic. No, no, no. You said no, no. Don't run away from this, please. You said that the pizza is omniscient. You're running away. You've just made a circular argument. You said the pizza is omniscient. The foundation of your how religion. Can a, how can the pizza be omniscient or I have any omni properties? I'm pointing out the reductio. Of your response. A pizza I say, cannot have any omni how properties. How does Allah know that what he knows is correct? Does a pizza, go, is it possible in your mind? Let's, not, let's is not it, talk over each other, so I'll let you finish. Is it possible in your mind that a pizza can have any omni properties? It's called a reductio. Do you no, know what that is? I'm asking you a simple question, which you know, is yes or no. Do you know, is, what, a, do you know what a reductio is? My, with all due respect, my question is simple. Is it possible in your mind that a pizza can have any omni properties? It's not the point of the argument. No, no, no. Right? I'm asking you a it's question. It's saying that it could be made. Right? I'm asking you it's one question. Look, with all due respect, I've, I've answered all your questions. I'm answering. Do you want a pen? I'm Do you want answering. to write this down? I'm answering. All right. So okay. let me let me I'm let me give you a pen. Let me give you a pen. Can we write this down for him? Because you know, he needed me to write the question down. Have you got a paper, my friend? Paper? No, no. Has anyone got a paper? Yeah. Uh, can someone provide a paper for me? I think you might have. No. No, it's full. You, 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 you make it full of yourself. Yes. No, so let's, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's save no, let me say, okay. let me write it down for you, so right? I find it. Is okay. it possible? Yes. No, no. Is, is that a pizza? Is not being able to answer my question. I'm asking you is the question. The correct response can have to, to develop a fictitious question. Omni properties. No, you, you made the claim. I can't answer. You made the claim. You're the one making the claim. Hold on, it's on. It's on. It's on there. You, don't know how you just said. Works. You just said you could say. I don't care about pizzas. Hold on, you did. You're the one who. Based on Allah. You just and said. You just told pizza. me that you don't know how his knowledge. Works. So do you retract what you said? Does anyone remember him saying? Oh yeah. That okay. No okay. Idea how Allah's knowledge works. Okay. Does, does All right. Uh, thank you very said? much. So you said, and it's on there, okay. that you could say that the pizza has om omniscience or omnipotence. Uh, I'm asking you the question. An attribute of a thing is no, this. but you don't understand this. Here's, I've written it I down. I understand for you. it better than you. Is it good? Is it possible that a pizza can have any omni properties? It's as possible. Yes or no? It's as possible as a being that you have no evidence for existing. No, no. no. Yes or no? Could have it, those omni well, we know a pizza exists. Is it possible that a pizza can have any omni properties? Well, you don't know every kind of pizza that might exist. No, a so, pizza, so in our it, definitional sense of the word, where it's uh, it's dough sorry, with, with toppings. A different pizza. Different margarita, pizza. margarita. No, 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 no. Margarita. No, don't limit the pizza. The pizza well, has no, no, 99 a, a, attributes. A pizza has I'm doesn't sorry, have 99 attributes. Do not excuse. Me. So now you're, you're defining. Me so yeah. yeah, now the pizza has become well, God, yeah? Well, yeah. Oh, exactly. But so now, that's no, the but point. No. You can't say it's so, just so, an so, attribute because you're not answering anything. But hey, with all due respect, you, you said a pizza, and you went like this. A pizza. I said pizza. I did not. A, what's a pizza? Okay. Pizza. What's a pizza? I said a reductio of your argument. Listen. Right. Do you know what a reductio? Is? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So reductio of your so, argument. Yeah, but, but before you talk about reductios, I want to ask you a question. I listened to you. Can you show him that one without interrupting you? Please. I yes, listened to you without interrupting you. Okay? And I simply asked you. Yeah, well, I was the one asking how, you. Why are you interrupting me? I simply asked you, how does Allah know that Allah's knowledge is correct? We don't know okay. how Allah's knowledge Don't occurs. interrupt me. I did not interrupt you. With a little song and dance. Go on. Contain yourself. Go on. You can do that? Yes. Great. Go ahead. Okay. So you asked me, okay? 
or, or rather I asked you initially, how does Allah know that Allah's knowledge is correct? You said it's one of his attributes. Yes. We agree on that, right? I said saying it's one of his attributes is not asked, uh, answering the how question, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. And then you said, oh, we don't know. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's fine. But you haven't actually explained why then you should trust it if you don't even know how it works. Okay. Last thing I'll say, I'll hand over to you, we're going to be civilized here, right? I said a reductio of that argument could be that you could invent any object and say it's just one of its properties. Yeah, I right? understand what you're saying, but what I'm saying to you, have you finished? Okay, okay so Go ahead. I, I'm just looking for an answer yeah. to the question. Yeah, okay, good. Of, why you would trust Islam? No, no, no. Fine. I understand now what you're saying. In terms of howness, when it comes to any of the attributes of God, the Muslim understanding is that we don't know how any of the attributes operationalize on an essential level. We don't know how. But what we do know is, and that's what we say, the Quran says in chapter 42, verse 11, Laysa kamithli hi shay wa sami' al basir. That there's nothing like him and that he's the all seeing, all hearing. In other words, Anything that you can conceptualize in regards to like, for example, Allah is all knowing, all seeing, all hearing. Where we can see, we can hear, but our seeing and our hearing and our knowledge works in a completely different way to the way Allah is seeing, hearing, and knowledge works. Which means for us, the howness when it comes to any of Allah's attributes is something we cannot, it's unfathomable, right? It's beyond human comprehension. Yes, it's beyond, but the, the, the whatness is possible to understand, but the howness well, it's possible to believe, <coughs> yes, but it's not to understand. Yes, but, but I just like I believe he knows everything. Yeah, yeah, it's conceptually and I believe that conceivable. That everything is, he knows right. is right, even though I have so, no so, idea. So, so I answered your. I, does that answer your question? No, you've just said we don't. But you, that, you've no, just said humans can't understand. Yeah, yeah, fine, good. Right. So, but that's that, so my question. Yeah, your question. My, yeah. my question then yeah, would be. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Let's say I'm Lawrence Krauss. I right? like you, whoever. Yeah. No, let's say I'm Lawrence Krauss. No so that's a guy you know about, right? So Lawrence Krauss doesn't know explicitly how something can come from nothing, right? Yeah. Yet he believes it. Yeah, but it's a, but, yeah, go okay, so yeah, go, go. Uh, he can just say, yeah, yeah. right? Well, it's just beyond our understanding. Yes, but, but his. But, sorry. Uh, go ahead. How are you not just. Here's, here's the difference. The difference is this he's making a claim which is falsifiable, whereas I'm making a claim which is unfalsifiable. That's the difference. That's, but that's a bad thing to be doing. Right? An no, no, no. unfalsifiable claim. No, it's right? not bad. We're, we're, no, it really is. When you say, That's I have no think. idea how Allah could know that everything is right. Yes. Right? I have no understanding of how that could be. Yes. All I can say is, I believe it. No, no, no. I'm saying, look, here's you what I'm just saying. just believe it. Let me explain the difference, if you don't Krauss mind. says something better than you. No, he doesn't. He's he got actually it. does. No, let me explain why he doesn't. He's not... You think he just has a pure faith? No, no, no. Let me explain. I won't interrupt you. He said that the universe came from nothing. That's not only falsifiable, but it's been falsified. It's not falsifiable. Okay, so hold on. If I, if you make the claim that something could come from nothing, yeah, and I can disprove that claim in all of the methods of inquiry that we know how to disprove that claim on. That's and, not disproved. So, so no, it is it? Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on sorry, sorry. Okay. all due respect. It is a disproof because now what you're saying is you're accepting some epistemic, uh, epistemological um, ways of systemizing an answer over others. If I say, look, zero plus zero equals zero, that disproves that zero plus zero equals one. According to a certain uh, formulation of mathematics. Good. But that's a formalism. No, I understand. That's just a well, to a certain epistemology. Good. His epistemology is different from yours. No, but right? it, so he doesn't believe so, in this. So a property of nothing is that it can beget something. Yeah, just I'm, like a property of Allah no, no, no. is there's, there's no that he's all And you have no basis no, for either for of these two claims. You've just said something. You have just the belief, though. No, but what's, that's your, ev the difference. No, what's your evidence for that? Well, you just told me it's one of his attributes. No, I'm not talking about Allah. So I have no evidence. No, I have as much you, as you. No, no, no. Which is just that it's so, one of his attributes. But your question was not, how do you prove the attribute of knowledge? Your question was relating to a mechanical aspect of that knowledge. Mechanical yeah, aspect. No, you are asking of the howness. I'm telling you there's a different... You're, so you're, you haven't come and asked me the, the question that you want to ask... You, you need to ask me in order for me to prove. You've asked me a question that's irrelevant to approving this course. Because if you came and asked me, if you don't mind, you know, we're having that interchange. If, if you came and asked me, how can you prove 
that Allah is knowledgeable or that has this characteristic of knowledge, then I can provide proofs. But if you ask the, the other question is, how is Allah, how does Allah know? Yeah, or how does Allah know anything at all? That's a different question. I'm very open yeah. with you on the second one. How Allah knows, we say, we don't know. How? The mechanics of it, we don't know how. And you can't then say, well, hold on, sorry, if you don't mind. You can't then say, well, that means to say that there's no evidence for it because that's the fallacy of it. That's an argument from ignorance. You know that, yeah? It's a fallacy, right? Do you understand this point? So, yeah, but, but saying that you have no way of knowing how he could know that what he knows is correct, you have no way of knowing. No, but that's that. Right? Yeah, there's two things you that's need to separate. How, I didn't interrupt you. Yeah. That's the bedrock of all of Islam. No, 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 no. It is. The attributes of, the, of Allah yeah. are, is the bedrock yeah, the whatness, not of, the of all of Islam. But the okay. whatness, not the howness, though. That's the, that's the bedrock. The now, whatness, not the howness. I'll do it once more. Let's just get it out of our systems, right? That's the bedrock the of what? all I'm of Islam. <laughs> I'm joking, That's the bedrock of all of Islam, right? Okay, that basically okay. that Allah has a way of knowing that everything that he knows is hot. No, no, but right? here's what... Yeah, okay, okay, come on, come on. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Do you want to continue okay. talking? So the point about yeah. that is, right, that if you don't know how he could ever... How could, that, that state of affairs could ever be true, right? You have no understanding how, about how? how it could be true. It's just an attribute... Yes that comes from tradition. No, it's not right? just that. We can we can argue it from first principles. Okay, then let me ask you this simple yeah, question. Yeah. Do you think you could prove that Allah knows everything? Yes. Okay. Can I answer that? You don't have enough time <laughs> because you aren't infinitely, you know, we aren't going to be here forever and you're going to be, by the way, Robert, uh, that like 12th million thing that Allah, I could prove he knows that you can't. Oh yeah. You I just have a small right. subset of like, well, yes, you yes. know, he predicted some stuff. So you can't actually prove that he knows everything and you don't okay. know even how he could. Okay, good. And so the bedrock of Islam really starts to kind of like... No, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Well, here's what I would say to you. There's two things I want to say. First of all, there's a, there's a conflation here, if you don't mind me saying, between the epistemological way by which we can find out what things are a versus B, the ontological reality of the thing itself, B. And what I'm saying is that just because we don't know how to um, assess the full ontological reality of a thing, quantum mechanics being an example, like we don't have a, 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 a theory which kind of combines between micro and macro um, sciences right now. Well, you, let me just finish. Okay. No, we don't. We don't. We do. We, and then mine. Okay, well, I, we don't, can, want to, I don't want to distract you. Bring your, your you can bring your evidence for that. But then we don't have, in, in the philosophy of science, there's different perspectives. I don't want to go into it. There's funda fundamentalism, I'm not foundationalism. Much more about it than you. Don't worry about it. It's you fine. might, you it, might not. It's fine. I don't know. Let, you might do. You know, and if you do, you can go. teach me. The whole point is yeah, about the ontology is different from. Basically yeah, yeah. So the, the whole point is this is that. Models and theories, even in the philosophy of science, as you know, more than me, yeah? As you, I'm sure, you, are always going to be limited. Do you understand? So, so that doesn't mean that things don't exist in the real world unless you're an anti-realist, right? What I'm saying is that even if you are an anti-realist from that philosophy of science or an idealist, it doesn't mean to say that you can divide now and say, look, just because X is unknowable is untrue. That's a fallacy. You have to understand I didn't that. I say it's untrue. I'm just saying, how can you know it's true? Which is different. No, 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 right? fine. If I'd come and said, no, 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 if not I, true. If I'd said, you said how? Said, Look, you said I how? I can falsify Islam. I got it. It's over. Good. Right? Then you'd have a case. No, no, no but, what but I'm saying, I didn't try but and do you were asking me about the howness, right? I'm asking you how you make the positive case. But you're asking, yeah. And your answer to positive case is, it's just an attribute. No, no, no. We you you weren't asking me about how to make a positive how case. How it's operationalized. You were asking me how, how it uh, how it's works. That's the positive case for Islam. Right? That's not a positive case the for positive Islam. The positive case for Islam is that according Allah to you. has these attributes. But that's right? according to you. And these attributes are true. Yeah. And they define all of reality. Right? No, so no, not that's really. the basic case. Here's what right? we, can okay, I... Okay, let me finish. Yes, I, go ahead. Yeah, I did. Go okay. So but, I, asked but, but that's you not you, true. I asked you how you cash that out, right? And you said two things. You said the first thing is, it's just an attribute. It's just an attribute. It's and necessary. we must admit, we don't know how it's operationalized. Yes. And then I said, can you prove that he knows everything? You said yes, that we found out you couldn't really... No, you asked me to do it, you then, could, then you didn't give me a chance. Okay. 
So you you actually do think you can prove that Allah knows everything? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. First of all, what you have to define everything. What's your definition of everything? No, you just said yes. So I'm no, just yeah, like no, you no, I'm, I'm, we're having that discussion now. So before, because everything is a thing, right? Or is it was a series of things? So I'm asking you, what's everything? I mean, without limitation. So everything in existence. You're going to prove to me that Allah knows everything. Uh, yeah, I know, but so, we're having a discussion. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, I know you seem a little bit okay. uncomfortable. Okay, right now. I'm, I'm completely comfortable. But, okay. but let's say there's a fact. Yes. All right. Let's imagine that there is a finite number of facts. Yes. Let's imagine that there's an infinite number of facts. Yes. In all cases, yes. you can prove that Allah knows them all. Right. Yes. That's it. Go ahead. Okay. So my proof is as follows, yeah. My proof that God or Allah is that first of all that He is a necessary being and that He knows everything first requires me to prove that he's a necessary being. And I'll say that they're inextricable things. So if you want me to prove the secondary thing, you have to allow me to prove the first thing. <coughs> and my, my, my proof for, for showing that he's a necessary being is as follows. Necessary being, in my definition, is that he's the uncaused foundation, or if you like, the, uh, the, the uncaused foundation of all things that exist, yeah? How is that the case? I say that must be attested to for two primary reasons. Number one, there cannot be an infinite regress of causes and or, number two, there cannot be an infinite regress of dependent things. So because... Okay, you're going to make an ontological argument, I know. Not really an ontological, it's more of a contingent, contingency argument. But what I was going to say was that because there cannot, because A, you allow me to, you, I'm proven, right? Because A, there cannot be an infinite regress of causes and or, uh, and B, that there cannot be an infinite regress of dependent things, therefore there must be a necessary existence. The necessary existence by definition is where all the dependent things and all the causes depend upon something else for its existence which is independent and is self-sufficient. Otherwise, A, there would be an infinite regress of causes, or B, there would be an infinite, and or B, there would be an infinite regress of dependent things. So because of the absurdity and impossibility of A and or B, okay. there has to be a necessary existence. Okay. So, so far, are we on the same page? No. Okay, can, no. You, can you provide a counter-argument? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that's a basic contingency, but it's an ontological argument, basically. Saying about can't that there can't, can't, be be can't be an infinite reverse of things. Okay. So and or dependent things. That's yeah. been answered. Sorry, not things. I said, I said can't be an infinite regress. I'm not saying that there can't be an infinite regress of things. I didn't say that. I said of two things. Though. I said, A, there cannot be an infinite regress of causes, and or B, there cannot be a regress of dependent things, contingent things. Right. Yeah, okay. so can you, de can you defend sure. yourself? Sure, so uh, it depends on what theory of time you have, right? So you can basically have an eternally existing uh, block of time, yeah. right? Where causation is something which is an illusion of the illusion of time. Right? That breaks that argument completely. Not really. It does. Because it's mine's because, a temporal because argument. Because the things don't cause each other. No, right? I appreciate That's it. That's illusory, right? No, but causation doesn't don't have to be... Don't interrupt me, mate. I'm not after, but, I've, yeah, okay. not after I've listened to you okay, go ahead. patiently, okay. right? All right? We'll play the game, okay? So that breaks that argument, right? That's a great argument. <laughs> Listen, I heard you say so many things which I think are wrong, right? And I was like, in your perspective, all right. So just try and do the same, okay. So basically, without cause, without 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 temporal causation, right? You can't have causation. You have blocks of time. That causation is illusory, right? And time makes that illusion appear to us, okay? That's well known in the theory of time, which breaks the the, the causal dependency. Okay? The other thing is that you can have basically a uh, circularity, right? So you can basically have a, a circularity which is just continuing where you can have time, you can have causal dependencies, but they basically don't infinitely regress because simply they cycle. So you know of like bubble universes, right? 
uh, and the like. So the notion that you require this being and that you can prove it's the case is broken by two, A, by an interpretation of time, B, by an interpretation of cosmology, but C, also that you don't know, right? You exist within a universe that you and I will admit to each other, we don't really understand the full physics of, right? We don't. You, you, you admit that, that we have, a, you know, that there could be an a-causal quantum world that we don't understand how it relates to this one. So to say it's absurd, that there can't be something which doesn't depend on another. No, but what I when said, we both, I'll, I'll finish because yes, I'm not going to. But, yeah. but basically, when we've admitted that we don't have a final theory of physics, yeah. to say something about physics is absurd. You know you think. So. All right, can I can I respond to you? Go ahead. So when I said and or, it was an important conjunctive element to my argument. Okay. Because when I said now that you, you you cannot have an infinite regress of causation and or dependency. Now, when I say dependency, what I meant was contingency. And contingency is different to causation. In so much as the definition of contingency is, is basically reliance, okay? Now, aspects of one thing relying on another thing doesn't actually depend on time whatsoever. There's no way to prove that. Whereas causation... No, no, hold on. So, so what I'm saying is, my argument is not a temporal argument. It does not require time to be made. Ontologically, my argument can be made in abstract terms without any reference to time whatsoever. So what you have to disprove is my argument now, specifically the argument about contingency, is that there cannot be an infinite regress of contingent things, things relying upon other things ad infinitum, without there being an, without there being an existence of an independent thing through which all other dependent things can depend upon, and that thing depends upon nothing, because that would constitute the foundation for all other dependent things existing. Yeah. What you have to show is why... No, no, because remember, what, I, what, I said, what you said, number one, was, was the time element, which I've, I've said to you, it's not, nothing to do with... <coughs> you can't show that my argument. it'd be time, the blocks of time depend on... No, no, I don't care about time. You can't show... No, I'm not making a time-based argument. It doesn't matter. Good. But, but on any theory of time, you can't show that one moment depends upon another. I'm not saying moment. I haven't said this. You said dependency. But I didn't say moment. So so that dependency but, needn't exist. You hold can't on, hold prove on. that it doesn't You just exist. said moment. You can't prove I that say... one thing depends upon another. Oh, you, oh yes, I can't prove that, actually, yes. Go on, then. All right, so you depend upon your parents for your existence. Why? Because had your parents not consummated their marriage or whatever it is, you wouldn't exist. They haven't consummated their marriage. Or whatever yet. it may have been. They haven't consummated their marriage. So, how, so you don't depend upon anything for your existence? So, no, we're just running your argument. You you're don't saying, depend upon anything for existence. You're saying I depend on something which happened in the past. I didn't say anything about past. You're saying... My no, no, I didn't say anything about past or future. You're putting these words into so my So you're up. saying my parents just could have sex on, in the future no, and no, that no, would make no, me... No, no, I haven't said that. So now you're poisoning the world because no, you know... I'm asking. I'm, you said things. Now, how do, I, how do I prove that things are dependent upon other things? I'm, ask, I'm, I'm waiting to hear how yeah, you I've do that. Yeah, I've just given you a cosmological example. No, I'm asking you how you do that. I've just shown you. Are you dependent upon something for your existence? So, so if I say no, right, you prove, you're going to prove that I am. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, because it, had it not been for X amount of variables... Had it not been, that's the past tense. Hello? You're I'm, addressing time. I'm not talking Do about it time. Do without addressing time. Doing it with Prove the, that I'm but we live in, a, in... But cosmological examples in this world are always going to be in reference to time. Well, there you go. No, but so I'm not, when you on. tell me you're not making reference to time, no, 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 and then you but, say but cosmological this world, answers, but, arguments but, 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 are always going to no, reference no, 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 no. time, in this world, you have contradicted yourself. Is this, we're is, making is this universe, conversations in this universe. Is this uni Here we're stuck no, no, in speaker's no, no. corner. Is, is this universe all that there is? So you've contradicted yourself. Is this universe all that there is? Sorry? Is this universe all that there is? You're making arguments in this universe. Is it, I'm asking you, is this universe all, this, all that you're there is? You're saying in this universe you're only ever going to be able to make a temporal argument. Is this argument. universe all that there is? You just said in this universe that okay. you're only, ever, only able to make a temporal argument. If you want to make a... You're, in this, mu fine, fine. you're in this universe fine. No, and no you're claiming to time. not to make a temporal argument. No reference argument. of time. No reference of time. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let me make the ontological case. Okay. Yeah? That 2 plus 2 equals 4. Am I supposed to look impressed? I don't know what... what. No, no, hello. 2 plus 2 equals 4, yes? So 4, in this case, 
is contingent upon 2 plus 2. Let me give you an analogy, another one, to help you understand this. That's proof they could exist. No, no, hold on. Which That's, is there the any God, time there? That God exists. Is there any time there? Yes. Where's time in 2 plus 2 equals 4? Okay. If you basically had 4, yeah. okay, and it was just 4, yeah. right? You had not had the addition of 2 plus 2 okay. right prior. It was just 4. It wouldn't be contingent upon the addition. Two plus two. No, I'm saying two plus two equals four. I'm giving you the whole no, equation. No, it has to come before it for it to be contingent upon it. Before if four it. things had always existed, they wouldn't well, be contingent before? on two wait, plus wait, two. Where's time in mathematics? Sorry, where's time in mathematics? Well, that's the whole point, right? So that's why two plus two equals four. There's no time in right? mathematics. Right? There is, actually. Where? So basically, that's why you have a temporal sequence in an algorithm. If you write the algorithm backwards... No, 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 hold all on. Right, Mathematics exists if, if you were, without reference to time. Would you you're agree talking this? about contingence, right? Which is a dependent on something. You're saying four is contingent on two plus two. I'm telling you, four needn't be contingent on two plus two. I'm asking You've not proven a well, necessary contingency. You're trying to prove a necessary contingency. Say that again. Right? Okay. You're basically, before we get to how Allah can know everything, right? We're trying to prove that he definitely does exist. Yes. Right? By contingency. The, the, the definitely it is the case but that you, these you, things. So when yeah, you say yeah, you. four, yes. definitely depends on these two things. I'm saying four. No, what needs, I'm, what four I'm, hold on, hold on. on two plus what two. I'm showing you is because because the point is you can only you said you can only talk about this universe, yeah? No, I didn't say that. You said in this universe. In this universe, you yes. Can, you said. Yes, yes. I'll just rephrase exactly yes. what you said. You said in this universe you yes. can only make temporal arguments yes. because you reference that. Yes. And I said fine. Yes. Then you have a problem, right? Yes. If you're making cosmological argument alone, well, but I'm not making a cosmological you're argument. You're making a dependency argument. No, no, but I, that, uh, okay. For existing, yeah, I, I see. Plus two. I see the interrogation. Can, can I can I respond to it? Yeah. Okay. So, my argument can be made ontologically as well as cosmologically. If it's made, okay. if if the contingency, I'll admit to you, if the contingency argument is made cosmologically with reference to things in this universe, then it has to be made with examples, not necessarily with conclusions, but with examples, which are uh, contingent. So, for example, if I talk about you, like I did, yeah, you're, I, you're a contingent being, you would agree, but you're saying that's with reference to time. So, so you exist with reference to, you, you exist in time, but you're also contingent. What I'm saying is that it's possible for entities to exist without reference to time. So, for example, mathematics is a realm, or it's a discipline that can be done, if you like, or exists without reference to time. Same as logic itself. Logic itself is something, the rules of logic, can be, can be understood, can be demarcated without reference to time. So not everything that exists ontologically or metaphysically, extramentally, needs to exist with reference to time. Therefore, I can still make the, the contingency argument, because contingency as a concept, as an as a, as, as understood concept, could be made without reference. Absolutely right. Yes. Absolutely right. But yeah. you have to prove it. Anyone How? can make an argument. What do you mean prove it? Well, that's what you're trying to do. Yes. You're trying to prove so that Allah this point, yeah? can know everything. No, but good. So we agree on this point, right? So we agree on the... F we agree. I mean, it would, it would be kind of ridiculous yes. if after all this time we arrived at that. No, I don't, I don't think something can depend on something. I mean, that's perfunctory. No, no, not only that. We agree that contingencies Perfect, exist. Perfect, but yes. But you, you're setting out to prove, A, that Allah definitely does exist. But what I'm sure, yes. And moreover, Perfect. You, to prove that he knows everything. But what you also said here, which is it's very good. the mountain. Good. No, it's, it's not the mountain. I think you're going to come to it. You're, you're an intelligent man. And I, f I believe you're going I'm to come. I'm a genius. You're, you're in a, uh, a hopeless cause. But yes. you're giving it a good go. go yeah, so thank go you. I, so if I'm going against a genius like you, then I, hopefully I'll learn. Because I'm, I, I always like to learn I more. I mean, we have different worldviews. Yes, good. I'll do what I can. OK, so what I was going to say was this, is that basically... We sharpen each other. Yeah. What I was going to say was that, is that basically, when it comes to... Uh, so what we've established is that dependent things exist, yeah? And also, we've established that things can exist atemporally, yeah? Like mathematics, etc. Now, what I'm saying is that we have conjecture. <coughs> we don't. I mean, the existence Unless, of mathematics could be no more than saying that, that we believe it's the case. But uh, the existence like, of mathematics is is, is, is we can but, all say we can do. Mathematics can be realized or can be understood or can be conceptualized without reference to temporality. It's a concept. That's yeah. the point. So, yeah. so, so conceiving of something doesn't mean that it's actual. Good. In that's its existence. now going back to realism and to realism but, idealism. But, but here's the point. Yeah. We're just basically saying that it's possible to conceive of things, but we have to do much more in the case of Allah. 
we can't just say it's possible to conceive the not knowing being just. No, we're no. like, you're like, dude, I'm going to prove it. No, no, good. But what I'm saying to you is this: it's not only something which you can conceive. It's now it depends on what what, what vision you have. Like, what uh, are you an idealist or you're a dualist or a materialist? I don't know. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that already. We have, if you, you, we've kind of established that materialism or naturalism, if you like, in a, in a, in a clearest sense of the, or the strictest sense of the word, couldn't be a consistent way of understanding the world because we've said that mathematics is something which exists extramentally. I, I mean, I think naive realism or a kind of naive physicalism, but I don't, but, but I mean, that's like philosophical detritus. No yes. one really believes in that stuff, you know, since the collapse of, uh, Probably logical positive. So what's your what's your what's your what's your view on it? What's your what's on your, like uh, yeah. uh, naive realism or something? Yeah. Like what, that? What's your what, are, what is my metaphysical yes. view? What are my metaphysics? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think I'm uh, troubling me for you. I'm uh, yeah uh, hard philosophical skeptic. Yeah, so, but are you, uh, would you, would you, so, would you, would you identify as a so, so, realist, anti-realist, idealist, naturalist, or what, where would you go in, in those camps? Ah, see, but that's Dualist. the whole point. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm skeptic to the point of theorism, which is what makes your job so hard, yeah. right? Because like, convincing a skeptic is super, super difficult, right? Okay. Because you have to build the foundations and show they're true, yeah, 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 yeah. And, then, and then build basically the case, show that God exists, and then build the omniscient case, and so. What I'm asking you to do is to do that from the ground zero. So, yeah, yeah. But I am actually that way. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, pretty much close to a theoric skeptic. So. But I, I would, I, I, I would. I, 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 but I yeah. like you in this sense. I would put I, you. I yeah. like you in one sense. The last thing I'll say yeah. is that I would assign certain probabilities. Okay. In a hazy fashion, to yeah. certain things being the case, but you're in a very different camp, which is a claim of, of absolute epistemological certainty, which I think is like Mount Everest with flip-flops, right? Depends so I, you I admit your job is much harder, but that's why... But you're, you're, I, you're I saying like that probabilistic it. arguments are, are epistemologically justifiable from your perspective, that you could make a probabilistic argument and you... It might be, that's the whole point. I'm a theoric skeptic, so I would assign a probability to that being but the when case. But you're, when you're making that probabilistic argument, where would uh, your starting point... If someone was making a probabilistic argument to, to you, where would your starting point be in terms of substance theory? Where would it, where would it be? Well, would you start off as a dualist position or an idealist position or a naturalist position or a realist position or anti-realist position? A pure inquisition. Right? When someone tells me that they're certain that there is a God who knows absolutely everything, I'm like, I need to listen to this guy. Because either he has no idea what he's talking about or he does and I need to pay very close attention yeah. because, uh, you know, it's very difficult uh, epistemologically speaking, to provide demonstrations of really very much. Yes. Like you've read is, uh, Islamic theology, right? So, so you know about the struggles of uh, Ibn Sina of uh, uh, yeah, Ibn Sina or um, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah or uh, Al Ghazali, the um, uh, deliverance from skepticism, yes. not uh, deliverance from error, yes. right? Uh, Many of the greatest philosophers in Islam, like many of the greatest philosophers which followed them, ran into hard skepticism, yep. and it defeated many. Yes. Right? Who yes. then turned? They didn't lose their faith, yes. but they they lost the belief that they could really prove by, as Ghazali says, by a concatenation of proofs and arguments that this is the case. But you're saying by concatenation of proofs and arguments, you can do what Ghazali failed at. No, but then he and came so to the conclusion my ears that because well, Ghazali hey. changed his mind afterwards on the issues. Yes, but but kind why? of like Rene Descartes. He he, he went yeah, through the same meditation. Absolutely. Yeah, they're so similar. Yeah, yeah. And so few people get that. Yeah, that's impressive that you know. Yeah. So uh, I was going to say but that. But how did Ghazali come to that conclusion? He went through a skeptic process. Yeah. But how did he come to the conclusion that he was still a believing Muslim? He he he's the one who made the common ca uh, William Lane Craig use kind of cosmological argument. I mean, it wasn't original to him. It's not the argument yeah. uh, that well, rescued the one, he his put faith. It in that way. So basically, uh, he wrote Munkir uh, Minal uh, So this delivers uh, from everyone. Yeah, and basically, he has this breakdown. He's this genius. You know, uh, he uh, goes on the sabbatical. He's in the middle of uh, teaching his students. 
Yes. I think on your team or mine, I think. Yeah. I don't think they're not your team. Yeah, really. <laughs> Their own team. Yeah. So basically, at the end of that book, and I've only read the English, right? Yeah. He says it wasn't by this great logical process of proofs and errors and so on, which he was a master at. Yes, right? yes. He wrote like. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. He basically yeah. he looks at the Sufis. Yes. And yes. he says somehow they uh, approach God, uh, but yes. they don't do it. They do it as if in a dream. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so he says uh, it's by this, uh, he actually says, the sweet light of faith that Allah caused to uh, reappear uh, in my heart. And I hope that that sweet light of faith comes into your heart as well. Dude, man. I'm a skeptic. Never say never. Never say never, bro. Never look, say. it's been a pleasure. We're not done. We didn't, you didn't get to Because I, I, I need to pray. But okay. Oh, okay. But I, do you know, here's, I'll be honest with you. I have a sneaky suspicion that you already know this proof. What? And you already, look. I have a sneaky suspicion. I have. Okay. Look, you do. Well, what do you do? You've read Ghazali, go, you've read Al Muqid bin Salal. I pray everything. Go and pray and let's have a little. What? Is it, time to, is it time to pray now? Is it Maghrib time yet? Is it Maghrib time? Uh, okay, we'll need to, time. And then let's just quickly finish off. I'd okay, like let's, to let's finish off now. I think there's a bit of time. Go on. Oh, yeah? yeah? Okay. So, yeah, I mean. We have some names here, right? I mean, like, I came from the Western tradition where you hear these names of the Muslim philosophers. Yes. And you start with this kind of... Like, By the way, can I ask a question? What, what did you study? You studied philosophy, yeah? I studied everything. Yeah. Did you study it formally? I, I, I've studied everything. I'm an artist. Oh, really? Yeah, but I've studied cancer, neuroscience. Wow. I make films. Started two technology companies. Yeah. You're up against impossible opposition. Oh, my but God. But you've done well. I think, oh I think you've done well. The point is this, yeah. the, the, point, the point really is to say that I came from what I think is what you call an Orientalist, right? A, a kind of like post-colonial, quite racist, like caring about these Muslim philosophers, right? And I picked these up like, yeah, Muslim philosophers, so let's see. And I was like, men, well, like uh, Descartes, uh, like um, uh, Immanuel Kant. I was like, these are some of the best thinkers that we've had. And I'm only reading the translations, but I can see how sharp someone like even Temir is. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, any of the great thinkers, uh, Omar Khayyam, Ghazali, others. And I was just incredibly impressed, not with Ghazali as a philosopher, but with uh, Ghazali would clean up at Speaker's Corner because he was so good at disassembling people's positions, but he was so good at disassembling his own. That was yeah. his problem. And so he, his uh, Ashari, <laughs> devout Ashari belief, tended much more Sufi. The, the, the Ghazali that most Muslims admire, I think, is a Ghazali that's the first 40 years of, of, of his life, right? And so that's why uh, I ask you the question, because yeah, but you, you know the benefit, you know that. You have the benefits that he didn't, right? You yeah. have like all of modern knowledge, you have like Google and you have many people around you. You have the Hamza tortoises and these guys who are all, you know, the divine reality. That's quite the claim, but not one Ghazali would have made. And so that's why I just, you know, I see, I see, I respect, in, in I respect question. where you're coming from now. But once again, I think basically the argument I'm most convinced with from the literature is an argument made by Ibn Sina. Avi Senna. Okay. Okay, so the, 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 I've, I've written a book called Kalam Cosmological Arguments. You've written a book? Yeah, yeah, I've written a book on it. It's actually been peer reviewed as well. That's a journal. That has been reviewed. It's been reviewed by Mike, because I was doing at that time, when I say peer reviewed here, I should be clear. It's, some, some journals need to be peer reviewed by two things, and I bring it back with like amendments and stuff, yeah? But this is because I was writing this as part of my uh, master, one of my master's degrees. I was doing it in SOAS. What, what are your master's in? Uh, Without being nosy, don't tell me if you don't want to. But no, I've, okay, I've, anyway. Yeah, it's fine. It's not problem. Okay. So, but, you, so, so you wrote a book on on, on Kalam cosmological arguments. And so, my my teacher, his name was Emin Shahada. He was um, he's basically uh, he's one of the editors of Brill. I'm not sure if you know Brill. Brill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, he's, he was a great teacher. I learned a lot from him for a long time. And then when he was teaching me, one of the things I really fell in love with, to be honest with you, was Ibn Sina's argument. Because we went through all of those kind of classical scholars, and one of the ones that I felt was 
theology. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with him theologically, but I yeah. felt as a philosopher... His theology is yeah, it's not, unrecognizable to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, Muslims. Muslims yeah. Yeah. But that philosophy, and I think that deep down, Al-Ghazali, Andy Ibn Taymiyyah, and everyone that came after him recognized the genius. And they cleaned up the theological aspects, but they took the arguments. In yeah. my opinion. Yeah, 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 so, 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 so people like Al-Ghazali, they actually took the arguments of Avi Sana. Yeah. So, so, so the argument basically that I'm making to you is, is his argument, not mine. And it's it, it the argument of basically it's called Burhan al-Siddiqeen, or the argument he makes in a book called Al-Isharatul Tanbihat, or pointers and, remi and, and kind of reminders, which is extant now, it's is, 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 is translated I think as well. Peter Adamson has some good stuff in the English language, which you can consult. Um, so basically the argument is this is that he says about con uh, contingency he says the same thing as I said you can't have an infinite regress of causes or an infinite regress of and by the way he was an eternalist right so he believed in the eternal universe but he says that there's a difference between believing an infinite regress of um, time and an infinite regress of causes so he and other people believed in an infinite regress of things. Like Ibn Taymiyyah believed in perpetual yeah. pre-creation. Yeah, which cyclical, necessity... cyclical creation and destruction. Yeah, yeah. so not destruction, but creation in the past, perpetual in the, in the, in the past. Anyway, so, but... Ah, uh, you mean like, a, okay, so, so an infinite regress of Allah's evolving of... Ibn Taymiyyah basically believed in something called Hawadith La Awwal Allah, which means that God continued to create perpetually into the past. Okay. So there was no beginning, if you yeah, like. Yeah. And, 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 so he was, in many ways, he was similar to the Eternalist. I've read like three different opinions about what Ibn, opinion, uh, Ibn, Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah's opinions were yeah. about. Uh, he wasn't the, the, the creation of the prophet, uh, the first prophet, yeah. Adam, and. Uh, I think he changed his views over the course of his life. On I, this issue, that's the only thing I came across in his book called Dar'at okay. bin Aqli wa I mean, to be honest with you, he's written a few books, yeah. but, but this is, seems to be his opinion. Okay. Because how do you know what Ibn Taymiyyah's final opinion was? was well, through his, uh, his student Ibn Qayyim, basically. Okay. He, he, he changed his opinion on a few things, but um, basically, he believed in pre-perpetual uh, pre, uh, creation and pre-eternally. And... Um, so he wasn't an eternalist, but he believed in an infinite regress of things. Yeah. Ibn Sina believed in an infinite regress of time. So in a sense, an infinite, uh, or an infinite of, infinity of time. So he believed in the same thing as Aristotle believed in, the Farabi believed in, Kindi believed in. But the point is, is that they all rejected an infinite regress of causation. Like even uh, Aristotle rejected yeah, it. Basic and Farabi, time, yeah, Farabi, yeah. Aristotle, Plato, I think as well, you know, Avicenna definitely rejected it. The Jews rejected it, like Maimonides, etc. Uh, um, Aquinas rejected it. So I haven't actually seen anything in the medieval literature, going back to the Hellenistic time, of anyone who's, who said that they believe in an infinite regress of uh, causation. I've never, I've not seen that. I've seen them believe in infinite regress of things perpetually into the past, and so on, but not of causation. Particular. So the argument that he's making is there is the cyclical, eternal uh, yeah. birth and death. Which just never ends, so it's basically just a loop, and it appears yeah. eternal to us. Yeah, but etern that's an yeah. eternalist view, though, isn't it? Yeah, but the point is, it isn't infinitely regressive into the past. Yeah, it basically is no, but what, occurring but they and believe, arriving back in the future. But, but eternalists like that believed in uh, b b believed in infinite so, so that's Hindus. Yeah, yeah. I haven't like looked into were it. But yeah, I, that's I'm a polytheist view, like yeah. like uh, a Vishnu. Well, it's also the Taoist view that basically. But would they say that there's an infinite regress of causes as well? Sorry? Would they say there's an infinite regress of causation? There was just an eternal circle. Because, like I said to you so, before, Ibn Taymiyyah and Avisana both believed in an infinite something. But they were linear. Yes. Yeah, no, but the Taoist view or the Hindu view is of an endless circle of life and death. Yes, okay, but then once again, it's not necessarily causation of that. I don't know, I, I couldn't tell you. He's talking about the recreation of people. Yeah, yeah. Re Reincarnation, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but so. Um, so Avi Sana had this view that he basically talked about the infinite regress of dependent things. And he says that's impossible to do, right? So his, his argument, basically his proof was this, and I think it's, it's the strongest one we have, in my opinion, yeah? He basically, well, Leibniz took over and, and done his continuous argument with it, but I think it's from him, yeah? Because that's something that genuinely didn't come from the, uh, from the Greeks. It, that was innovative. He says the, the contingency argument. I don't think it came from the Greeks. There's nothing like it from the Greeks. He says that this is one thing that's a contribution. He says that basically, if you have a series of things, all of which are contingent, 
you have two possibilities. Either that, that series itself is independent, or that it depends on something external and independent. That's the, the only two possibilities. Because you can't, he says, you can't have a series of things. Plato, which, Plato made that argument just by the by. But I don't think he made it in the, in the way that he made it. Okay. Yeah. yeah I don't think so. Because uh, because Aristotle didn't when he was talking about the physics and the metaphysics. When I looked at the works of uh, Aristotle and his references to Plato, there's a there's a, something called a Thomistic argument, which is basically about uh, an original causation, which which is very much like the. Uh, the thing which uh, has no contingency, right? Yes, the, yes. the uncontingent cause. Yes. Yeah, that's like a, but, a thermistic argument. In but Greek, the, the, the Greek interesting philosophy. thing about this but is you're that. Saying, so, 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 so here's why I always make the argument in two ways, yeah, because even Tufail, who's another guy who's um, also kind of not known, within, he's not traditionalist in that sense, not yeah. normative within the Islamic circles. I've never heard of him. Yeah, he, he said that there's two things. He said you can either make an argument from causation or an argument from contingency. Yeah. And he says those two things are not the same. Yeah. He says, but you should make both of them at the same time. Yeah, yeah. and then if, if, if this one doesn't work, then this uh, one has to work. Okay. That's why I tried to do that with you. Like, basically, okay. it's like, I'm that not getting sense. this myself. Well, I, I'm saying to you, look. That's why you said and or. That's right, so it's, uh, these are, this is not me. I'm just standing on the shoulders of giants, in that sense. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, and you're tall. And I'm tall already. So, so basically, the argument is that the, the, the contingent things can either yeah, uh, so the, the series of contingent things, if it's infinite, it can either be independent or, de or dependent. If it's dependent, it needs an independent. If it's not, then how could it exist? So it has to be, uh, so basically it has to be either an independent outside of it or it has to be the independent itself. Now, there's a secondary argument that's connected to that. The argument that is secondarily made is the, it's called Hujayat um, al or the, uh, the argument of parts. So basically that there can't be like a series yeah, of things. It's like a Zeno's paradox. Yeah, so, yeah. so in a sense that... You basically just can't reduce something down because there's an infinite number of parts never amount yeah. to anything. But then, so, de so therefore the parts, so for example that series is made out of parts and the parts depend upon itself. Anything that's made out of parts is dependent, basically, that's the idea. Okay. Anything that's made out of parts is dependent. The series is made out of parts, therefore the series is dependent. Therefore, what we need is something which is independent and it's not made out of parts. As long as it's linear, linear. Yes. As long as it goes back progressively. But this is why the Taoists and the like never had that problem, because they. Yeah. You know, you come here a lot, yeah. and I know you believe in your religion sincerely, but you would admit that there's a little bit of you that wants some attention. Yes. You're good, but not as much as that. <laughs> <laughs> like me too, right? I have to admit the same. Yeah. But just be like, Bruh. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, so last thing I'd like yes. to say to you, which is just like a kind of personal, kind of general state of the world kind of question. The world seems in a less good place, even though you don't remember me, than a couple of years ago when we debated. Like, there's, uh, there seems to me so many crises of uh, knowledge, um, uh, trust of information, news, fear of new technology, artificial intelligence, just the, the world is changing out of kind of all perspective. Um, the first world countries, if I can use that, insert whatever the, the kind of like politically correct term is, are becoming progressively less religious, it seems. How do you feel about the state of the world and the state of Islam as it engages with uh, modernity? So by modernity, I mean, let's forget the new atheists and the, 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 they're gone now, right? There's kind of like a, a more kind of like sensible, I'd hope you agree, a less shrill kind of just, we're all trying to get along and make sense of the world together, right? Sam Harris is not beating, or Chris Fitch is not beating the lectern anymore. How, how do you think of how uh, the state of the world, Islam, atheism, and the kind of general sense of chaos that people apprehend? One thing is that two th in the Western Hemisphere, like, and especially in the Western part of Europe and America, there's two things which are on the rise, Islam and atheism. And that seems to be it's quite like an ironic set of affairs that both of those things are on the rise. Thank you. John. You can take it. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is, we, should be, uh, we should be wrestling here. <laughs> 
That's like slap me. Yeah. yeah. Um, both of those on the right. Both Islam's of them on the right. Much faster, I think, than. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So both but of in those the world things. generally. And I think that you know the thing is, is that <laughs> here's what we need to understand that now. These are two different paradigms. People that, like me, traditionalist Muslims, yeah. have certain paradigms which I, I'm sure you're very aware of. Do you know what I mean? Like, because you, you've, you've looked into our tradition and you've seen it, a lot of people are ignorant of that. And I think there's one thing that we need to know is that we need to, both of us start needing to, to know the nuances, like, of both of our traditions. So, for example, a lot of the problems I face is caricaturing of certain aspects of jurisprudence in Islam, law, and so on. And so, my what I try and achieve is that I try and get people to... Do you mean like inflexible aspects yes. of Sharia? Yeah. So I feel like there's, there's so much more flexibility that, it, that exists in Sharia than people uh, think are coming now. And, um, and also from the other side, there's a lot to learn about the West. And the, the Arab world doesn't know about it. Or let's say, for example, I know more about the Arab world, but... The Muslim world doesn't know about it in the way it should know. It's also caricaturing for both sides. Right. I think the best hope for the future is actually education. I know it sounds cliche, but no, if, if, if both if people that me and you that don't agree with each other's worldview, but at the end of the day could come to a conclusion that there's more nuance in what this person is saying than what I originally thought. I thought if I study Islam, I'm going to respect it less yeah. than when I set out. That was my, like, once I get to the bottom of this, is, and um, I, I didn't become a Muslim, but I became quite reverential of the belief, belief system and the, the thinkers, the intellectual tradition, which we were never taught about in school. We were, we were, you, I mean, I think there's an overselling of like uh, charisma and uh, there's a like Muslims do better than everything that's in, in your iPhone. And they're like, you, we don't believe in. Hopefully, we, we don't believe in that narrative. But just that, give it a fair shake. Let's tell you the actual, yeah. you know, the, the the facts of this. Yeah, to el eliminate those caricatures can only be hope. Because, yeah, I get as annoyed as. Uh, not that it matters, I don't do anything about it, but I get as annoyed as a Muslim making an overclaim as I do about someone denigrating Islam, which is, you know, the, exactly the same kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that's the cliche we're both making. So, but yeah. the nuances are there and they just yeah. need to be, uh, people need to be educated on them. Do you see it as a kind of deliverance from, from, from chaos that... What, Islam? Well, you know, our political systems are rocking and rolling, you know, they're not, and uh, uh, the Muslim world is not without its troubles, but it has a long tradition. Religions have long traditions. W what do you think of, like, the, the fact that, for instance, in America you have, or maybe in the world more generally, you have a question about whether there's even, you know, two genders or two sexes, these kinds of things, which have stood solid in religious traditions, not all of them, but you know, they have, do you kind of see that the kind of breakdown of meaning in the world is a kind of harbinger of people uh, seeking something which what we've both been looking for in this conversation has a foundation? Yeah, I think, uh, human, I, I think you'd agree with me that human beings, but like they're pattern seekers, number one. And number two, they're purpose seekers as well. These are the two Ps that I'm sure, you know, human beings are pattern and purpose seekers. Yeah. And that's what's attractive about Islam. I think a lot of people come to Islam because it gives them pattern and purpose. This is why things are the way they are. And this is why you are you, the way you are and why you are here even, right? So it's like uh, how the heavens go and how to go to heaven. Yeah. Gives you exactly, exactly, exactly. And atheism, in a sense, in an ironic sense, does something for atheists. That's, in a sense, I wouldn't say it's for purpose or patterns, but it's, it's kind of like, ironically that. Because if, if you think about what atheists are trying to do, they're trying to liberate themselves, really, in my opinion. They're trying to liberate themselves from some kind of superstition, from false beliefs, from what they consider as false beliefs, uh, from many different things from uh, religious discourses, constraining practice, rituals and so on. All of that they're trying to liberate themselves. And in a, in a weird sense, that actually f facilitates kind of purpose for them, right? And, and that's why I was actually looking at one study, I forget the name of it now, but I can dig it up for you if you want, which, which analyzes because 
a lot of these economic studies, like about the happy index and all that, that's not actually uh, accurate because it's not a psychological study. But there was one yeah, particular. Just polls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but and they're based on HDI and GDP and stuff rather than rather than actual. Uh, there, there's two separate things. So so there's one set of like the World Happiness Index is a, literally just a poll. Yeah. And then there's uh, United Nations, I think. Might even be World Bank. I think it's United Nations, which is uh, an index of uh, the things which relate more to prosperity. Yeah. And they're like, is your water clean? Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, but then they then they, the, they aggregate those things. You'd be amazed at places where the water isn't that clean and people, people are happy. Yes, yes. Exactly. The, the, yeah. exactly. So what I was going to say to you is that there is this. I'm going to get you this reference because I haven't. I haven't to take it dig up, but it's an interesting study which has been done on religiosity and happiness. And the idea is that the more religious you are, the more happy you are. However, what they found really interesting in the study was that atheists, which were very like positive atheists or on fire for atheism. yeah, they also exhibited the same kind of. Yeah. Happiness so that it, those really it just speaks people. to what you're saying about yeah. having like pattern and meaning. Yes. If you've got that, you've yeah, yeah. And so I, I think that in terms of deliverance, obviously my worldview says that if you come to the Islamic understanding, you're going to get deliverance. But I guess people are going to find deliverance in the, whatever way they want to find it. But then the question is, how do you get purpose and truth, an ultimate truth, together? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that genuinely, maybe it's something that Al Ghazali said that we need to pay more uh, attention to. Pay, he, didn't pay more. he didn't end up in a good state of affairs. Yeah, I but, mean, but, in the but, end, but he, he became a Sufi. But then he, he was basically basing it on his instincts and his intuitions, right? Yeah, yeah. So maybe we should look into our instincts and intuitions. Interesting. Yeah, because then we have like a common <laughs> cause that we both. This is the thing I found like such uh, sympathy with, with this guy that I thought. Yeah, uh, so just a, we'll end with this, but it's kind of an appropriate place to end. The reason that he was on first authors I picked up, uh, uh, first uh, Islamic uh, scholars of jurisprudence uh, of uh, fiqh and uh, and um, kalam and, and everything was because he was so demonized uh, uh, by some scientific. Uh, so Stephen Weinberg said he killed off Islamic science with this book. And I'm like, I have to read this thing. It must be dynamite. And I realized it's a total misrepresentation. It's like a scapegoat, right, of this. And I found, as you always do, that the person is more deep, is far deeper uh, with these kinds of people. Some people you find are less interesting. But, but he was involved in exactly the same struggle that every human being is, trying to find pattern and meaning and just I, uh, he was trying to be a good person. I, I don't know so much about whether he had this notion of being, you know, a perfect person, but he was he was definitely trying to be honest. That's what comes across. It's like he can't lie to himself. It's like so why he made life so difficult for himself. And, and that that he kind of um, relaxed into a, uh, a deep faith, but not one where he's like, come at me, bro. I know everything, and, and and in that I was like, that's someone I, I agree with, mm. you know. And so hopefully you yeah. can agree with him some more. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you'd like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm anyway, sure one day, man. Pleasure, pleasure, I man. Doubt it was that's fantastic, happen, man. Thank you, man. It was a I learned a lot from you, man. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too, so please consider sharing. And we will bring more videos in the future, inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallahu khairan.